All right, welcome. We're going to be looking at a new H-Bridge motherboard design, and this will work up to fi a 500 volt motor. We're going to be using an integrated circuit called the IR2110 by International Rectifier, and you will see momentarily the circuit in this picture in full operation. I'm controlling it with an Arduino. The two IR2110s are these two integrated circuits here. These are four in-channel MOSFETs. This is, this is 12 to 15 volts, which op, op, can operate the Arduino if you add a 5-volt regulator. And it also supplies the gate voltage for the MOSFETs. And the MOSFET voltage with this device can be up to 500 volts. The previous video we were using these photovoltaic optocouplers. They have their good sides and bad sides. This is an improvement. All right, let's watch the live video of this circuit in action. Then I'll come back and I'll show you around the schematics. Welcome back. We're looking at a uh, new H-Bridge motor control board that I built. It's being operated by an Arduino Nano. This is my home-built Arduino breakout board. But our main subject is the IR2110 half H-Bridge driver. Of course, for an H-Bridge, I had to use two. Nonetheless, this particular device is fantastic in that you can switch high voltage motors, inverters, or whatever you need to at very high frequencies at up to 500 volts on this particular one. Another similar part I think is 600. Nonetheless I am operating a 24 volt motor and the nice part about this is that I do not need P-channel MOSFETs. I've gotten around using photovoltaic optocouplers I've used in the past and so forth. One thing to note, to use this I would use it at 24 volts or greater. If you're operating a uh, let's just argue 6 volt motor or something, this is not what you want but this is for higher voltage motors. I tested this on two different MOSFETs, a high voltage MOSFET and a lower voltage MOSFET. And this is how it's going to work. Note the motor here. I have an Arduino, two switches. I have a pot connected to analog zero to control speed. You should be able to see the motor shaft turning and you could hear it. The motor is in the lower right hand corner. I can vary the, not only can I change the direction, I have a very smooth control of the motor speed in both directions. I can change the motor speed while it's running. Or I can use a preset value. I'm using um, to write, I'm using two of the analog write outputs. That's D5 and D6 on Arduino. And then I'm using two other connection, non PWM connections. Of course, I am using the PWM on the uh, Arduino. You see what it does here. I can really nice speed control, easy to change direction. And like I said, the advantage of this with these higher voltage motors and transformers, inverters, and whatever you're using uh, no P channel MOSFETs, no photovoltaic optocouplers, and so forth. This is your motor control voltage. This is your 15 volt gate voltage for the MOSFETs. It also, I installed a 5 volt regulator on the board to operate the 5 volt input on the IR2110s. That's the digital logic, and it also powers up the Arduino. All right. 
to the technical details. The IR2110 is a 14-pin dip circuit. I think they have a surface mount version. I use the dip version. And it consists, really, if you look at the pin diagram here, and you, here's 1, here's 14, and you split it in half, this side is what operates your MOSFETs, and this side is the interface to your microcontroller. All right, let's notice the half of the circuit here on the right. Q1 is your high side MOSFET. Q2 is your low side MOSFETs. All the MOSFETs used in this are in-channel MOSFETs, so you're not having to deal with P-channel MOSFETs. How I generate the voltage to switch Q1 on, and, and the motor voltage can be up to 500 volts with the IR2110, is I'm charging a capacitor through this diode from VCC, and this switching circuit here, and like I said, the detail, more details on the web page, is that it's switching on and off and charging this capacitor CB, which, is, which supplies the gate voltage for Q1. The voltage on, for Q2 is independent. This is connected in what is called a totem pole configuration, both Q1 and Q2, and the internal MOSFETs here. So how I generate in this part of the circuit, as I set up here before, is floating and independent of the rest of the integrated circuit, is I'm essentially charging up a capacitor called a uh, bootstrap capacitor. I'm charging it up through VCC and, and through switching on and off these MOSFETs in the appropriate way. It, when the, when the uh, capacitor is charged up, um, MOSFET A here will switch on. It delivers the voltage to the gate. Q1 turns on. And what happens is the uh, bootstrap capacitor will gradually discharge. This has an under voltage detector that cuts it off and it cuts it completely off and switches in B and clears the capacitor when the voltage drops to about eight and a half volts. This prevents erratic operation. So that real briefly, that's what we're doing. And like I said, 500 volts, no P-channel MOSFETs, no photovoltaic optocouplers. This thing will work up to, I think, 100 kilohertz or more. And you need two of these circuits to, perform, to form a complete H-bridge. As I said before, the a complete H-bridge consists of two halves. Both the halves are identical. And this is one half A and the other half is B. You have two inputs. Here's your charge capacitor. When you're using... You, if you're using this thing at a really high frequency, you need to use a high-speed switching diode like a UF4007. I used a 1N4007. Here are your resistor and uh, gate diodes, both of those. Those are high-speed switching diodes. I used a 1N4148, for example. The capacitor is 0 0.22 microfarads, and uh, here is, and it's cross, if you look at the inputs, the inputs are what I call NA high and NA low, and I have an Arduino program for it. Here is the note that this circuit has been all over the internet. I have found a number of errors on the ones in the internet and it explains how I change the circuit when I you set up my own. <clears throat> Here is section A. Here is section B. If you look over here to the sides, it's a little hard to see perhaps, I sort of crosswired the N high on A to the N B low and it's cross-wired as I show here. You can use 
uh, I use digital pens D5 and D6. What is the secret to switching this thing on and off that never shows up in the literature? The high side input must be pulse width modulated. You can't just set it high, it won't work. The pulse width modulation is what charges and discharges the capacitor to generate the gate voltage for the MOSFET or the IGBT. So this is very important that you remember this. You have to have pulse width modulation input. <coughs> I also put on the web page, here's your Arduino code. It's, it's rather self-explanatory. It looks more complicated than it is. It's just the way Arduino is. But I have the code there. But anytime you want to operate this, you're going to have to have, have the input high in must be pulse modulated or it won't work, as I demonstrated in the video. Like I said again, here's the Arduino code. It is on the web page. And that completes this brief introduction to the IR2110 H-Bridge motor control circuit. Uh, I, have some more, I have some more parts coming in the mail from eBay, and I will work those up and make videos on those as well. Appreciate listening. Hit the like button if you would, and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com.